What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel. It's Thursday, which means new player packs, new reviews, and a new li live stream today that we are going to be kicking off with at around 3 p.m., maybe a little before that as well. We do have a new setup that we're going to be getting used to, um, so hopefully you will join us for the journey, and I want your advice on a couple of things as well. But anyway, we are going to kick off very simply as we do every Thursday with the first video player of the week. Now, obviously, we do have Maldini and the AC Milan boys as well um, that are going to be interesting ones. I will have that up later as well, but we are going to start with the player of the week. You can see here, this is kind of my first time looking at them in depth. I have looked at Kunde and I also looked at Kamavinga to see what they're like. We will go over to eFootballDB as well to just see how these kind of couple of guys that we are going to pick out shape up against um, you know, these player of the week versions, because obviously Koundé's had a couple of different, uh, versions and obviously Kamavinga has had a few different versions. Uh, Jota has had a, a couple of different versions. So yeah, I mean, apart from that, I don't think that this is probably one of the better, um, you know, packs that we've had. Obviously, if you're taking a look at players, uh, you know, in a vacuum, depending on when you drop in and drop out of the game, uh, and when you download the game to play it, these players might be an upgrade or they might be, you know, worthless to you. So it depends on, you know, your your kind of squad. So we will start with the lower rated players at the bottom here, at the back here. We've got Murphy from Newcastle. He's quite an interesting player. We've got Openda as well. Um, you can see here that these have got unique stats. So this guy's got chip shot control and Jota has first time shot. He goes up to a 96 overall, which is fairly big for a Liverpool player that hasn't really featured this year, but he's had a good couple of last weeks and a couple of last games. So we will start with Openda. Obviously, he's on A form. All of these players will be on A form. I always like a player with super sub um, and track back, especially that this guy is a goal poacher and he can only play center forward. So if you don't want him tracking back and you want to nullify that, make sure and put counter target on your center forward. I have a lot of videos that I'm working on. Um that will kind of like, you know, bridge the gap between skills, what skills to use and stuff. A lot of people ask me about that, but I do go over a lot of stuff live in the live streams as well. So make sure and check those out if you haven't already. But this guy is a center forward, a goal poacher, 88 acceleration, 80 finishing probably isn't enough to lead the line. So I would say that he's probably a skip for me. He doesn't have one touch pass either, which isn't killer. Um, but his low pass is not going to be, really come into it. But I don't like his offensive awareness and I don't like his balance. That's the two things I don't like about this card. Next up, we've got Murphy, who's an out-and-out -out winger, and you've got really good uh, acceleration. But again, you've got that same issue of, um, you know, the lack of tight possession, low pass is only 72, which isn't a massive issue for a winger if you're just dependent on speed. But, you know, you can pretty much buy any winger in the game now for about 100,000 GP. That will be faster than Murphy. You know, I would even look at his teammate, Maximin, uh, who's going to come in to fruition a lot this week, I think. Um, because, you know, a lot of people want a bit of pace in the, in the game now. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on the likes of Dembele or somebody like that. But I do like his player skills. He does have double touch. He has long range shooting, first time shot, pinpoint crossing. He also has early crossers. So he is kind of a bit of a hybrid uh, between a left winger, right winger slash right midfielder. I would probably play him right mid. But then you are, you are dependent on his play styles and his player skills to kind of get you over the line a lot of the time. See, the problem is if you've been playing the game for a long time, you're going to have better players than these in your squad already. Otamendi, just super slow. He does have 93 aggression. He does have blocker, interception, fighting spirit, man marking. He has a lot of really nice player skills, unwavering form. Bit of a beast at the back, kind of in a similar vein of uh, Ramos or any of those kind of slow, you know, um, center backs that are destroyers. He will win you a lot of ball. He's not the tallest, but he's got 92 jump. Kind of reminds me of Thiago Silva. Has got excellent defensive capabilities, but I don't like that the defensive awareness is only 84, and especially that the, that uh, his acceleration is below 70 as well. Not that you need acceleration, but usually the defensive-minded centre-backs that are just really slow have got at least 90 awareness to be able to get around the pitch and win you the ball back with the kind of the auto-tackling. So just make it that what you what you want, lads. It's, it's, it's somebody that I wouldn't really recommend. We also have Lee... This guy is a centre midfielder. He can play multiple positions. He's quite a solid player as well, I would say. One touch pass, double touch, pinpoint crossing. He also has a long ball expert, which is nice. That will kind of like overcompensate for his lack of passing because you can't train these players up. I do like the fact as well that he has true passing, which is a very underrated skill. And a lot of players don't have it. Even top class players, a lot of them don't have it. He does have track back as well. So if you were playing him as an AMF, um, you could track back a tiny little bit. He is a whole player as well, which is probably the most dominant uh, position in the pitch. I would be playing this guy as a center mid because he doesn't have any defensive stats. But then when you are as an AMF, 
But then when you look at, you know, on the on the database or you look in the actual market, there are so many better AMFs than him. So it just depends whether you want to have an, a whole player and you spin him randomly. Uh, I wouldn't be spinning for him specifically. The same with De Jong, you've got that same issue. Yes, he does have really high offensive awareness, which would make brilliant runs for a fox in the box. He has super sub. He does have acrobatic finish and dip and shot, heading and chip shot control, which is very decent for a player like him. Um, I think he's obviously quite slow, but 65 acceleration isn't really going to come into it with the 88 awareness. The biggest problem with him, in my opinion, is his balance. He is tall, and if you are going to be using a player like this, then you know you are going to be using somebody like Haaland if you can afford him, or somebody in that in that kind of mold. I think that he just lacks a lot of uh, a lot of stats and a lot of skills. Um, you know, he's just not a nimble enough forward. I wouldn't recommend him. He's not for me. We also have Pablo Fornells. Fornells, this guy is a left midfielder. He's on fire at the moment for the Hammers. No look pass. Very unique play style that this guy has with the whole player. And very unique kind of blend of double touch, one touch pass, no look pass, super sub, long range shooting, soul control. And he also has true passing. So you can see a kind of a team following with the way that the players are being balanced now. Uh, a lot of players are kind of that are really class have got some, you know, excellent, excellent player skills uh, to go along with everything else, um, as well as having all the play styles and all that as well. So that is always going to be interesting. Um, but we also have the ball control at 90 which is quite decent, the low pass at 85, which is quite decent, but the rest of it is, as a left midfielder, you're just going to be probably going to be able to get better players than him in your squad, but the whole player on the left side is very, very decent because he cuts in, so yeah, he's probably one of the picks of them, but you are kind of scraping a little bit there at the bottom of the barrel, uh, because, you know, depending on when you've started this game, and I keep repeating it, you probably have a better left midfielder that can do pretty much everything he does. Uh, we've also got Raspadori. This guy is very unique as well in his super sub, one-touch pass, rising shot, first-time shot. And he also has some nice stats, but he just has the same issues, man, as, as a lot of the players that they release in these. In the fact that his dribbling is tight possession, you're going to get better than that, even in standard, you know, Vinicius Jr., Fatty, uh, Dembele, Diaz, Anthony, wherever you want to play a left winger. You are going to find it hard to get this guy in your squad acceleration and speed are quite decent finishing is quite decent he's kind of a cut in and score winger for Napoli but I definitely think that there are better options out there than him we've also got Camavinga this guy this version of Camavinga isn't too bad lads he's not actually too bad at all um I wouldn't say that he you know he's the best player in in the game uh especially as a defensive fullback he's down as a left back here which is a very unique card to have I think for Camavinga right so he kind of doesn't really compare to anybody else um, you know, defensively, he's not going to have unbelievable stats. I think I'd be playing him as a CMF, um, you know, because he does have one touch pass, but yeah, it's just an interesting card. I mean, I don't really rate, I don't really, I'm going to rate him as a left back because even though he is down as a defensive full back and he's been playing there a bit, you know, I don't think that that's his best position because he is kind of like a box to box type player, but I would be interested to see his defensive full back play style and see what he actually operates like. We also have Mignan as well. Um, you know what you're getting with this guy. He's an awesome keeper, lads. He's been one of the best keepers in the game ever since the launch of the game. 90 reflexes. The parrying is a bit of an issue, but other than that, he's a very, very, very solid player if you spin him. And then on to the two big picks, right? So Kunde, we'll spend a little bit of time on Kunde here and we'll then spend a little time on Jota because this is the best card that they have released of Jota um, ever, I think. So obviously he goes up to a 96, but Kunde, when we actually take a look at Kunde here, the biggest stat for him is his tackle and his defensive awareness, right? So if you are looking at his standard version, is on A form as well, and we go over to eFootball DB. When we take a look at Kunde here, like we want to be able to get that up as best as we possibly can. Um, you know, maybe up into at least the nineties, right? So if we are taking a look at if we are taking a look at his his defensive awareness there, we can pretty much get better stats with the standard card defensively, right? Where you kind of let him, where he kind of lets himself down a little bit is that acceleration and speed. Now, you can still get it fairly similar, um, but you're not going to get the speed as high. But, you know, the speed and the acceleration isn't, in my opinion, a huge deal. Um, you do more kind of have to balance the card. So you can see that this standard card has better defensive stats, but he, he's not as fast and he doesn't have the acceleration or the jump. So, you know, you can kind of you can kind of see where they're trying to balance these players. And then when we take a look at the rest of his stats, right, and we take a look at, you know, his low pass and stuff, that's going to be way better in this card. So as a defensive fullback, I think this guy is a monster, lads. Really, really good player as a defensive fullback. 
He has the speed, he has the pace, he has everything that you could possibly want with him. And he is, in my opinion, a top 10 fullback, centre-back hybrid. So, you know, he has everything that you could possibly want with him. He also has on this card pinpoint or early crosser and aerial superiority and soul control. So he's a bit of a baller. I think this card is going to be the pick of him. And then last but not least, we have Diogo Jota or Jota. Again, he's got a, a standard form on this card, but double touch. He's got track back, cut behind and turn, soul control. It's an excellent card, man. It's an excellent card. And I think that when you're looking at a card like this, um, you do have to obviously think about how you're going to be playing him. I would say that he's probably going to be best suited to a center forward role. That would just be my opinion. Um, you know, because his standard card is a center forward. Like if you were to take a look at his standard card, I think it's available for about 200 and, or is it 170,000? But we can match that card up very, very easily, as I'll show you here, right? So the main thing that we're going to be looking at here, if we are playing him as a center forward, I think as a winger, his dribbling is strong, but I don't think because of his play style, I don't think, you know, that there's a point in really, um, in really kind of training him up that way, if that makes sense. I don't think that there's a real big point in training him up the way that they kind of train him here, because you can train him slightly better. You don't really need, you know, if you're playing him up front, you don't really need, um, or as a, as a winger with this card, as his prolific winger, you don't really need shooting. And his shooting kind of really takes up this card a lot. And also, his 96 overall is kind of a few fake calories or empty calories, lads, because he's got 86 heading as well as a, as a left winger. And jumping and uh, stamina and speed, like they bring up the overall without really doing anything on the pitch. So if I was training him up, you are going to have to take a couple of, make a couple of decisions with him to get him up to a fairly decent player. But this is his standard card that goes to a 92. You've got 89 acceleration, 87 balance, similar speed, similar stamina, similar ball control, dribbling and tight possession and finishing is a bit lower. But I would probably say that that's equally as good a card because you're not going to see a massive difference between finishing, you know, between, you know, what he has and um, like what what's there, 80 and 85. So yeah, it's a good card, man. But that is it for, uh, obviously that is it for the players of the week. I'll be back with Maldini and the big boys next um yeah i think these three guys are probably the main three and then obviously maybe murphy as well because of his form but yeah that is it for me lads i'll be back quite soon don't forget to check out the live stream later we will be live having the crack as usual peace